on 95.9 WATD. Sweeney was marching. Oh it was God. giving me uh, goosebumps. First of all, we song. want to say to Tom O'Malley, who's a retired commander in the United States Navy, uh, thank you for your service. You're quite welcome. I'd do it all again tomorrow if necessary. And oh, Tom O'Malley you. is also running for Congress. His theme, Joe, is bring back common sense. I like it. Very nice. Very all right. nice. Very now, nice. Joe, you've been through the, through the wars, the yeah. political wars. Yeah. What would you say to Tom? First of all, you're running for the seat that's currently held by uh, Mr. Keating. That is correct. You're correct. First time you've uh, you've ever run for office. I am a political outsider, wow. as they so, say. So what motivated you to run? Last couple of years, watching the news, reading the news, reading magazines, seeing what's not happening in Washington, which is getting something done for the people. And rather than things for the, the different political parties. So first of all, as a military guy, what is your assessment of where this country has gone, let's say over the last eight, seven years? In under, the last seven Obama? years, we have, uh, our allies don't trust us anymore. Our adversaries don't respect us. We've had a, a reduced capacity military. There's an article out even today that the 40% increase in helicopter crashes over the last couple of years may be part of the reduced maintenance budget oh, and training. Right. That may be part of the cause. And it would be a horrible to think that those Marines that just died in Hawaii died because of budget right, cuts. Right, right. And Tom, what was your uh, ex experience or what, what, what did you do during your years in the Navy? Originally, I was in Vietnam as an enlisted guy. I was an advisor on river patrol boats to the Vietnamese Navy. And once I, I got out, went back to school and during the reserves in 1985, received the commission and became an officer. And after the coal was blown up in October mm. of 2000, we started getting recalled to active duty on a regular basis because of my specialty in anti-terrorism and force protection. Mm. And I did three tours in the Middle East and the Persian Gulf as a boat group commander. I was responsible at one point for most of the small boat operations in the Persian Gulf. And my last assignment in uniform was at Central Command, where I was Chief of Operations for the Interagency Action Group in the Operations Directorate, where we worked with all of the, go all of the other government civilian agencies, all of the three-letter agencies, and coordinating, the co coordinating activities in Afghanistan. Oh, geez, that's, uh, that's quite a resume. And in the years in Vietnam, that, that, that must A year in pretty, Vietnam. A year, year on patrol boats. Pretty hair-raising, huh? Um, I grew up that year, I, I think. Bet, huh? I did uh, 240 combat patrols. Wow. How, oh, my God. Each each time you go out, you don't know whether you're coming back alive. Exactly. Oh, my God. Jeez. And you see friends who... Yes, know, and, you know, I still have friends now that are suffering PTSD from, from that war. Yeah. Uh, some that are suffering PTSD from Iraq and Afghanistan as well, which is, you know, close to my heart. Uh, the the lack of performance by the VA uh, over the last several years, that needs to be addressed. And, and by the way, that's one where, you know, you, you say to yourself, I'm sure they realize it's it's a horrible reflection on them that they haven't rectified the VA situation, and yet they can't do it. It's like they can't get out of their way. Yeah, they, you know, one of the things that has to be said, though, is because I've been there and I yeah. used to work at the shelter for homeless vets, and the people in the VA are doing a great job. You know, it's the it's it's the bureaucracy. Right. I agree. It's, it's I absolutely. agree because if you go over there. It's in Jamaica. It's uh, Jamaica Plain. You take a right on Washington Street. Most dedicated people, doctors, you know. The people at the operational level, the people providing mm -hmm. the services Great are people. tremendous. Great people. The people at the lower levels of the administrative piece of it are tremendous. They're all working hard every day. But you have the bureaucrats in Washington that are collecting bonuses and, for and, what? And by the and, way, and yeah. to be fair, to be fair, PTSD and so on, although it's been around for a while, they're just learning how to address it. They're learning more and more about well, it as research is going it. on. And this used to be what they call shell shock. Right? It used to be shell shock yeah. or the thousand yard stare right. or combat fatigue. Right. All right. Now, Tom, here's, here's a very important question because Joe and I, for once, we have somebody on who's really passionate about why they're running, which I like. <clears throat> but what, would, what makes you 
more qualified or better for the job than the incumbent. Isn't I can that work why with, you're I, exactly. I can work with everybody. Okay. I don't care if they're Democrat, Republican, Independent. I'll work with anybody. But what, but what makes you think this guy can't? It hasn't been done. There's nothing happening in Washington. It's a logjam. But you're running against one person. Correct. Congressman Keating. It right? starts with one person. Okay, but I'm just contrast you with him. I mean, you can't just run a campaign and talk about yourself. You have to run against someone else. Well, you also have to have your issues okay. and put them out there because the people know what his issues are and what his stances are. Then they can compare well, my stance to his. All right, well, tell us. He's done nothing about the VA. He hasn't seemed to have helped the fishermen. Here's a perfect example. The government now requires some of the fishing boats to have an inspector on board. Okay. But they require the fishermen to pay, pay them Imagine for the that. inspector. Jeez. It's unbelievable. Well, if the government wants to inspect the fishing boats, I think they should bear the cost of that. Not the fisherman who's trying to make a living. Okay, see, now, now to me, now you're talking turkey because local <laughs> issues are very important. Constituent services are very important. It's huge. Yeah. So I've so, talked to a, a group of uh, fishermen, yeah. and they've explained to me that their problem is they're not seeing any positive action from anybody on a lot of their issues. One of their complaints has been the science that's used to determine what fishing areas are open, which are closed, what the quotas are for different species of fish, are all determined by NOAA scientists. Now, you, but you're going to get down there, okay? So let's. And by the way, just to finish that all point, right, okay. then they get hit with these fines that are just basically about to put them out of business. If right? you're allowed to catch 5,000 pounds of <clears throat> fish X, yeah. and you catch 5,000 pounds of fish X, okay. but 1,000 pounds of them are too small to be caught and you throw them back, they still count against your quota. Wow. Imagine that. That's ridiculous. Jeez. How can you... Yeah, right. But, how, but what can you, as a congressman, because you get down there and we all know nothing's going on, you're one of, what, 500 congresspeople? 435. 435. What can you do? You inspire others. You explain the situation, how the good of this district yes. impacts the good of other districts not only in this state, but in neighboring states. There's a great fishing community in Rhode Island. If my candidacy or my work can inspire others to run of similar views and similar so efforts. So you get down there, you're in Washington, you start to build coalitions. Exactly. Okay. Now, in Massachusetts, aren't, Joe, aren't all our Congress people Democrats? Yes or no? They are. Yeah. We have not had no a Republican congressman okay. in Massachusetts since the late 90s. Now, why are you running as a Republican? Because there's a Democrat in office, and some of the things I believe don't dovetail with the Democratic Party. Okay. Uh, so, right now, though, the, the Congress is run by the Republicans, is it not? That is correct. Okay. But the president has veto power. He does. Okay. So, you are going to have to find a way to negotiate all this. Uh, but, but, Steve, yes, it's going okay. back to Tom's right, earlier just, point. We're, we're trying to understand the job he is seeking. Right. So, okay. so, so from this district standpoint, yes. it seems as though, I mean, roughly speaking, Scott Brown carried it in the special election that he won by a large majority. Okay. okay. And, and so, you say to yourself, isn't it great that we've got a competent, uh, accomplished individual who's out there given a, a healthy choice to the voters mm. of this district, and if they send him down there, it's one more voice speaking, as he puts it, for common sense. And and that's all very positive. But if people just draw the conclusion, like, well, what's another congressman going to do? He's not going to make that much of a difference. No, I'm not, drawing, make, you know? I'm not drawing that conclusion. What I'm trying to do is help you to articulate or help me to understand, you know, why you're running and your issues. You uh, I just don't think enough and, has and been that, done. That's what you're going to have to do in these town halls and everything Correct. else. Right? I just don't think enough has been done by the incumbent for the district. Now, he has voted virtually lockstep with the current administration on a lot of issues, virtually all issues, when you look at his record. And I would not have done that. I, and if it's how a Republican about, administration, I don't anticipate voting well, lockstep with them how, either. How about this? First of all, you have to rent, win the nomination for the Republican. That is correct. Right? Okay. So we would like to have you and your opponent in here on the studio and have a little debate. Is works that, for that, me. That, that works is for is there an opponent in the race? There is now? an opponent. Okay. I believe he announces on the 4th of February. Okay, okay, let's do that. All right, good. And then whoever wins that will invite 
Congressman Keating to come in and, you know, let's have some healthy debate. Sure. I'm all for it. Right. Good. S- Excellent. S- so uh, you, you kicked off, you said, uh, when? On the 19th. Days, on the 19th. And you've got your whole team together now? Well, the team is very years. small right now. This yeah. is your That's a, good. A real lean, grassroots lean. campaign. Yeah. Uh, hey. We're in the very early stages of doing some fundraising. Well, I'll tell you what you have going for you. You're very well spoken. Very well spoken. Thank you. Yeah. And you've yeah. got a good strength. We want really. strength. Absolutely. You yeah. don't want to screw with me, but love No, me. <laughs> no, you can take him <laughs> nope. down. Yeah, you you take him down. Come on. Down. He's a Navy guy. Believe me. Believe me. Down goes Sweeney. You know, down goes Sweeney. Down goes Sweeney. It, no, this it, is no. You know what? This is great that you're getting involved. We, we I, you, I wouldn't you grow do up? it. I grew up in South Boston, but oh, okay. spent all my summers here in Marshfield. Oh, okay. So right. I'm I'm a local guy. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm not a stranger to the now? area. We live now here in Marshfield. Marshfield. Okay. Well, here's here's what I would not want. Here's why I would not want to be a politician, and you can tell me why. Give me the the opposite. I would not might want my life examined, you know, by the press or whatever. You know. I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. I've made yeah. decisions in my life that I regret. I can't change that. That's not how life works. You, the press now is so invasive. Exactly. Well, how about uh, social with, media with, with Rubio? The Washington Post just yes. did a fairly big okay. piece right. about the traffic tickets. No, this one was uh, as as a kid mm-hmm. after his uh, freshman year in yeah. college. He was drinking a beer in public uh, okay. down in Florida, and he got arrested for it but they they then dismissed the charges and so that that's a story in the in the oh, newspaper man, you know you. you know so it, you know they ought to focus on the issues oh my god it's ridiculous it, really. it's ridiculous you know focus on the issues how I'm important not how important do you think endorsements are i think this year not that important not that important yeah, you know I, I don't i mean there's some that are just out of the box let me that ask are, you this but, how important for a republican here in this district would be the endorsement of a joe malone I don't know because I'm too new to politics. I don't know what weight Joe cut you carries. Just, you just had a wonderful an honest ch- answer. You had a wonderful chance to suck up and get your no, first No, but see, it was honest. You know it what? Honest, I'm not sucking up to anybody. There you go. I am what I am. Right. If the people like like my stance, all well and good. If they don't, they don't. I'm trying to be funny. And geez, so, I, so if you want to be funny, funny we're not, you we're not be helping f- you, are we? So, so, so oh. Stevie, if you want to be funny... Tell tell Tom, yes. South Boston guy, yes. how you got to be a South Boston politician in terms of the words you choose. That's what I said tone. to him. Hiya, yeah. how are you? Yeah. Nice to see you. How's the family? And then you never... Uh, um, here's the ones I'm sick of. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah, yeah. quite frankly. Right, right. Quite, quite frankly. frankly yeah, yeah, kick yeah. the can down the road. Right. What else? What do you got, Joe? Yeah, let's see. Uh, quite uh, frankly. Why not just say frankly? Yeah, yeah. We're having a time. We're having a time come over, right? And uh, the other, the other Southie you know, politician. You I, I think, I think though now this social media has really. Oh, it's huge! It's, it's got, huge. got an impact on everything. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, don't, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know what tweeting is. Everybody's tweeting. Well, it's Twitter, right? Well, so Michael will tell you. So you know, no, you just, I've so, never tweeted. You, you have tweet, you? Have tweet, you yeah, tweeted, yeah, yeah. It's, have it's you really I have. I, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I do Facebook. We've got a Facebook page for the campaign. We've got a regular website for the campaign, O'MalleyForCongress.com. What about the door-to-door stuff? Door-to-door stuff will come. As the weather gets better, we'll be out there wearing out some shoe leather. People do want to be asked for their vote, right, Joe? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I think they absolutely want to be asked for their vote, and I think they appreciate a candidate that will go out there and and walk the streets and knock on doors. Yeah. And they also like a a candidate that can laugh at themselves. Yeah, exactly. Well, you have to have fun doing this because if this, once this becomes a chore. All right, just just letting go of what you're doing, okay? So just take that hat off, political hat. How do all these guys feel that are running for president that are not Donald Trump? You know what I mean? They yeah, get into it's it. It's a grind, work. but you know but, what? But they you, work their whole you, life to get to this shot. Oh, now I got a shot. Now I got a shot. And this guy's just and, taking and over. He's the just whole. running rough yeah, shot over yeah, them. Yeah, no. How do they it's, feel? It's, it's uh, and you got to keep asking for money. <laughs> <coughs> you got to say, you know, it's going great. You know, and all we're gonna anyone make our want, move. wants to ask these candidates is about Trump. Right. I know it. I know he is. He's, they, he's they the nine hundred pound gorilla in the room. They don't want to talk about him. They want to talk about what they want to do. But the press is just absolutely now the one. It's unprecedented. I think the one who's really losing it is Paul. 
Rand Paul. Yeah, the other one was. He's turned. He's, he's turned nasty now. Did you see Chris Christie's uh, got it very very nasty today. With uh, some oh, woman really? said, "Why are you up here? Your state just had all these." <laughs> he says, "What do you want me to do? Go back to New Jersey and uh, and get a broom and start mopping the water out of people's basements? What am I going to do down there?" You know, he, he jumped all over it. But yeah. it just tells you they get tired. Getting, right? They, they, they get cranky. tired. They get an irri- get yeah, irritable and, yeah, and stuff and, like that. Now there's happens. guys who are running that don't even we don't even talk about that are still running. Right. Santorum and yeah. Huckabee. Huckabee, yeah. and I, I often wonder why do they hang in that way when there clearly is no chance that they're, gonna, they're going to win. And are they just uh, hanging in to get a job well, later on? I think they say maybe I can pull out a, a surprise, exceed expectations in Iowa or New Hampshire, but then after that, it's you lights know, it's, out. I think it's kind of done. Now, yeah. what about what about if if we uh, now if 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 Tom wins the nomination for the Republicans. What about a Charlie Baker coming down here and campaigning with him? Would that help? I, I'm sure it would. Charlie Baker is currently the most popular governor in the United States. Really? He is. He's the most popular governor wow. in the United States. And when I win the nomination, I will, in fact, seek his endorsement. Wow, that's interesting, huh? In the primary, of course, is in September. So you September got a lot of 20th. time to, uh, to work on we gotta uh, get shaking the other hands guy and kissing him. babies. So. Yeah, See yeah. a movie called The Campaign with Will Ferrell. It's very funny. Is it, is it good? He ends up punching a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see it, Margo? No, I it's funny. It's, I, I describe it like it's gross, but it's funny. So, so that's great. Yeah. Good for you. So, so, it, so yes. here's, here's my exit we got, question. We've got one okay. minute. Go okay. ahead. You've, uh, you've launched the campaign now. The money. You realize now you got to raise some dough. Huh? I realize. Okay, and I hate to even put that issue Two out biggest there. obstacles I have to overcome are name recognition yeah. and money. Okay. Well, so thank you. Roll Once up again. the sleeves and go ask Thanks for the for dough. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for your service, and we'll definitely have you on again. Thank, thank you, you for Tom having Tom O'Malley is his it. name. Keep your eye out for him. Tom O'Malley for Congress. He is running against the incumbent, Mr. Keating. And we'll be right back after uh, this news break on Sweeney and Malone, WATD. Stand down. 